Hi, AppSec engineers. This is a special announcement that I wanted to do, especially in the light of the new OpenSSL vulnerability that everyone seems to be talking about. We thought we'd clear the air and try to make sure that people understand what it really is all about and what it's not all about. Right? So let's talk about this and let's see uh, what it is and what it's not, especially clear up all the doubts around this new bug around OpenSSL. So OpenSSL is a very popular library that's being used by billions and billions of devices all over the internet. OpenSSL basically allows, gives you a bunch of cryptographic APIs that allows you to do everything from certificate management, generating certificates, to generating keys, to um, hashing, to do other encryption operations as well. It is a very, very popular library that is being used from toasters to uh, servers that process tons of information uh, in terms of storage and so on. So OpenSSL is ubiquitous, it's there everywhere. Now, October 17th was when there was the initial disclosure of a flaw on OpenSSL, where it was reported that versions 3.0.0 to 3.0.6 were vulnerable to a uh, flaw. Now, as soon as this happened, naturally, the community sprang into wild speculation simply because most assumed that it would be a remote code execution. Now, if you remember in 2014, there was Heartbleed, which is one of the, which has still been one of the most talked about vulnerabilities on the internet. Heartbleed is an open SSL flaw, which caused remote code execution, which caused the attackers to be able to gain access to backend yeah. and to be able to compromise the backend. So Heartbleed was a pretty huge flaw and people immediately started to have a throwback to the Heartbleed flaw. But it so turns out that it is not as bad as Heartbleed. Uh, the vulnerability was ca classified from critical initially when it was disclosed to a high on November the 1st. And that's why I'm making this video on November the 2nd to kind of clear the air about what it is and what it's not. Now, first of all, the very fact that the vulnerability was classified from critical to high automatically means that it may not be as bad as initially thought of. But let's talk about what it actually means. So the vulnerability essentially is where a, an uh, email is embedded in a certificate, right? So in a X509 certificate, you have a field where you have email. And in this particular email, if somebody crafts special Unicode characters and loads it in that particular email, any open SSL instance that is processing that certificate, parsing that certificate and reading that email might be vulnerable to this. So that is basically what the vulnerability is all about. So it's a very, very specifically triggered vulnerability based on a particular field inside an X509 certificate. So this might typically happen when, uh, you know, in terms of email-based uh, communication or when an X509 certificate is crafted and uh, the email has a particular set of Unicode, crafted Unicode characters that may be vulnerable to this. So initially, while it was thought of that it was vulnerable to remote code execution, where somebody could use this and trigger a remote code execution and take over the backend server, it turns out that the vulnerability actually has led to DOS or denial of service. Now, it's still not been proven that it le leads to remote code execution. That still remains to be seen. I'm sure there are researchers out there sitting and trying to figure out whether it can have remote code execution, which is, of course, the most uh, severe scenario of this flaw. But so far, I've, we've seen a whole bunch of very talented teams uh, doing research on this, and all of them have come up with the conclusion that it is still only a denial of service. That doesn't mean it's a no, it's a small flaw or it's something that is uh, that is something you can ignore. But it still means that it's not as bad as hard bleed or log for shell or some of these flaws that were really chart busting flaws. Now, Datadog has called this puny code, which is basically because the puny code function in OpenSSL was the one that is vulnerable to this. So if you have a Unicode based email, uh, this puny code function would parse it a certain way and cause the denial of service. This particular vulnerability has been triggered on Windows. Apparently, uh, Windows, they've been able to perform a POC on Windows and they were able to crash uh, the service on Windows. But on Linux, it's still not been proven. I'm not sure about the other uh, instances of this. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that this vulnerability seems to affect OpenSSL versions 3.0.0 to 3.0.6. So the first thing a lot of us think about is, oh my God, how, do, how will the cloud providers react to this? Now, turns out 
that only 1.5% of all scanned instances uh, on the cloud uh, have OpenSSL version 3.0.0 to 3.0.6. So apparently it's not as much of an attack surface as initially thought about. So only these uh, versions. So there are a lot of other OpenSSL versions from 1 to 1.0 or 1.1 and so on and so forth. Apparently the versions 3.0.0 to 3.0.6 are vulnerable to this particular flaw. Now, how do you deal with this? How do you, first of all, patch it, do whatever you need to do? Now, remember, OpenSSL is something that is used by the operating system, of course, and you will definitely have to patch that. That is something that you have to think about. But remember, a lot of application runtimes, like the Node.js runtime, also have OpenSSLs, uh, OpenSSL used as part of their runtimes, which means that you will need to probably patch those runtimes to the more secure version. You do have uh, OS query and Yara rules to be able to identify this stuff. And I'm sure if you have asset uh, ma management or asset monitoring tools, they have also started uh, talking about this and they've also started uh, issuing disclosures for this and issuing rules to scan for something like this. But this is something that you definitely want to do because even though this is not remote code execution level problematic, it's still a denial of service. And obviously if you're running critical services, you don't want a denial of service as well. So what I would think about this, first of all, look at the instances of your applications that are running uh, OpenSSL 3.0.0 to 3.0.6, uh, patch it to the 3.0.7 version that seems to not be vulnerable. Of course, you can never say today, especially after the log4j fiasco, there may be a whole series of uh, vulnerable and not vulnerable and vulnerable and not vulnerable instances that might be released. But so far, it looks like the OpenSSL team has released 3.0.7 that is not vulnerable to this. Now, remember, the, the skill level and the cost of exploiting this is a little complicated. You need to, it, it is only triggered under a very specific condition in a very specific type of communication. So, which means that the natural uh, possibility of this happening at, you know, randomly all over the place is a little lower. So that is something that you can take a little bit of solace in. Not as bad as heartbeat, but it's still a vulnerability that you need to take seriously and look at patching to the newer version, especially across all of these different runtimes. Now, there are a few runtimes that do not use OpenSSL. For instance, Go has their own implementation. They don't use OpenSSL, which is great. But there are obviously other runtimes like Node and so on, which use OpenSSL. SSL and they might need to be patched separately. So do think about that. Do use these scanning tools and uh, to be able to identify this flaw and of course patch this flaw as soon as you possibly can. But take comfort in the fact that it is not a super burning issue. Yes, you have to do it. You have to do it in a timely way, ideally as quick as possible, but it is not something that is literally breaking the internet, uh, which OpenSSL has the potential to do, by the way. So definitely think about this. I hope this is clarified. I have taken a lot of info from the Datadog report as well as uh, a bleeping computer uh, article as well as OpenSSL's own uh, vulnerability disclosure information. These three sources of information are very useful. They talk about, especially Datadog gives you a detailed breakdown of how it works. So I really appreciate their work on this. I really appreciate the kind of time that teams have put into this. So definitely take a look at this. The links will be in the show notes. So look at this and take action accordingly, but take comfort in the fact that it's not as bad as it could have potentially been. Thank you very much. I'll see you in another one of our videos. Have a great day.